I'm a Christian pastor, but I have a lot of friends that also work in the adult film industry, and they are lovely people. In today's video, I respond to notorious social media progressive pastor Brandon Robertson. This is gonna be interesting. Let's dive in. This is just a ridiculous scare tactic perpetuated by purity culture. Really, really, this frustrates me so much when people just immediately throw around the word purity culture in order to dismiss any kind of opposition to their idea. Now, the reason it's deceptive is because there were real problems with the purity culture movement of the early 1990s and 2000s where there was extra biblical teaching on dating and marriage scare tactics, gospel-less fear tactics. It was undoubtedly harmful. And I've been thorough and vocal about my objections to actual real purity culture. But to claim that calling porn harmful and destructive is all of a sudden purity culture is laughable. But at the same time, it's downright sad because you miss the reality of what pornography truly is and what biblical sexuality actually looks like, which we'll talk about more. You might not like porn. You may personally decide that porn is not good for you. And yes, there is evidence that porn can lead to addiction. I'm really glad at the very least he admitted that it can be addictive, but I really don't think he understands the gravity of how dangerous pornography truly is because I receive messages every single day from folks on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube and YouTube comments asking about how they can break free from pornography because it's ruining their life. To say that all porn is evil and bad and that porn always leads to immoral sex acts and even more immoral crimes like murder is absolutely absurd. Now, the question we should be asking whenever somebody makes a moral claim, even if they call themselves a pastor, is what standard are you using to judge? Because if you're using the Bible, you quickly find out that this is against what God has ordained. On numerous fronts, Jesus said, if you look at a woman to lust after her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. In Hebrews, it talks about letting the marriage bed be undefiled. Colossians 3, 5 says, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passions, evil desires, and covetousness. So what is God's properly oriented design for sexuality. I quote this verse all the time because it's important. Man shall leave his father and his mother and become one flesh with his wife. This is a covenantal relationship in marriage between one man and one woman. Do I think that watching this stuff, this harmful stuff, is going to lead you into um, destructive crimes and you're going to commit all this stuff? Um, not necessarily, but sin does breed more sin and it's heavily documented that once you begin to dabble in it, you don't, you can't get enough. You, you basically can't and it needs to get more extreme and more extreme and more extreme. Whether that goes into a criminal side or whatever else. And so it's not something you want to be dabbling with. It's literally telling somebody to play with fire. You think about how powerful sexuality is. And when it is used in a way that it's not supposed to be used, it is the one of the most destructive things in, in our world. I'm a Christian pastor, but I have a lot of friends that also work in the adult film industry. And they are lovely people. They are not immoral people. They are not leading people to do great immoral acts. And they themselves aren't doing great immoral acts. Notice the labels that he uses here. They're very intentional. He calls himself a Christian pastor. Why? Well, to give himself some sort of moral or spiritual authority with what he's going to say next. The truth is anybody these days can call themselves a pastor. I think social media has made that very, very clear. So especially when you're online, don't take somebody's word for it. Oh, just because they're a pastor means they have this spiritual authority. Then he calls people who make pornography, people who work in the adult film industry. Remember guys, Satan is the author of confusion. He loves distortion. He loves when things are unclear and when they can change labels and narratives and ideas in order to make sin less aggressive and, and kind of make it more palatable for me and even for Christians, that's what they want to do. He says these folks in the adult film industry aren't immoral folks. I got some news for you, man. We are all immoral. We all fall short of God's moral standard, but we are only saved through Jesus and his sacrifice on our behalf. That's how we can be saved. And if you are not a part of that, if you've not received that, then you are a slave to sin. Without surrendering to God and receiving his imputed righteousness, his clothing of righteousness. So when God looks at us, he sees us as perfected children. Without that, then we do stand immoral before God. This is one of the biggest deceptions of our day, that it is loving to tell somebody they are all right as they are, to say, hey, you're doing great. Keep going in that direction when they're not going in the right direction, when in fact they're going off the cliff. And you know that cliff is there because you walked there last week. And instead of saying something like, oh, hey, like I was walking there too, but I saw that side of the cliff and I turned around, you should do that too. We say, no, you're good just the way you are. Keep going, keep walking. 
You know what, who we're protecting? We're not protecting them. We're protecting ourselves. You think about when Jesus said the world is going to hate you. Like I think about that and the world shouldn't hate us because we're jerks. No, that's not the reason they should hate us, but they should hate us because we are preaching the truth and we're sharing the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts because it says that we need to surrender our lives, that we need to drop our pride. We need to humble ourselves, that we need to turn around. And we do that in a loving way, obviously, right? A lot of people, they're going to be offended by that and we shouldn't be surprised surprised by that. And we shouldn't just be obsessing about how we can please people or make them feel good or just kind of give them our unbridled approval on everything because we think that's what love is because that is what hate is, friends. I've seen so many stories come out of the pornography industry about how dark and twisted and depressing and life-sucking it is, truly, truly. And, And people that have gotten out of it are testifying to this. And yet some people still want to proclaim, no, no, it's good. It's safe. I have friends in it and it's, it's healthy. No, it's not. If you truly had friends in there, then you would say something. You would tell them, friend, there's, there's a greater hope. There's, there's more to life than this way. You don't have to demonize sex and sexuality and sexual expression and sexual art as something that should be despised because it's actually a gift from God. Sex, sexual pleasure, and the beauties of sex are a gift. It's a gift from God. It is a gift from God. You're right, but not in that context. That is taking a gift from God and twisting it and distorting it. And there's so many things on this earth that God has given us as gifts, but we need to use them in their right, proper context. And how do we know that? We know that by the Bible. And they shouldn't be looked at as something that is evil, but should be declared to be something that's good because God created it for our pleasure, for our enjoyment, for our connection. That last clip could have been part of a solid marriage series. You know, sex is a gift from God. Sexual pleasure is a gift from God. And we shouldn't demonize it or look at it as a a bad thing. I totally agree. You're on the right path, man. Except you need to make sure you're directing it in its proper context. The thing is, he's equating that with pornography, which is the opposite of biblical love and biblical sexuality. Biblical sexuality is committed. It's covenantal. It's one man, one woman within marriage. It's secure. It's selfless. But pornography is unfaithful. It is selfish. It is promiscuous. It is sexual immorality embodied. The tragic thing about this video that Brandon decided to make is people are going to watch this video and they're going to tell themselves when they're about to go into sin, they're going to say, well, this is a gift from God. Sexual pleasure is a gift from God so I can masturbate or I can watch pornography. It's like, it's a gift from God. No, how you're using that, that's not a gift from God. You're distorting and you're twisting a gift from God, a good desire that God has given you and in twisting it and mangling it and using it selfishly. Just because pornography can lead to addiction doesn't make pornography in and of itself immoral. There are many things that can lead to addiction. There are many things that can lead to unhealth in our bodies that are not in and of themselves sinful. It's all about the proper use of whatever that thing might be. At the end there, he says, it's all about the proper use for that particular thing. Well, how do you know the proper use if you are ignoring the Bible? Like seriously, you, you, so you're just deciding what the proper use for pornography is and what context it's okay and what context it's not. It's like, bro, you're making the rules all of a sudden, you're God. Okay, quick announcement before I get back into the video. I'm going to Israel and I want to take you with me. So a bunch of you saw that I went to Israel last year and I had such a great time experiencing the Holy Land, getting to see where Jesus walked. It was amazing. So I connected with Brandon Snipe from That Snipe Life YouTube channel and we're going to take a bunch of people out to Israel and it's going to be amazing. Click the link in my description and use the code listed there as well to learn more. This idea that sex should be demonized and sexual art and sexual expression should be seen as immoral and wrong is nothing more than a tool of patriarchal purity culture to control people. He said you're demonizing sex. No, no, no. It just needs to be used in its ordained context by God. I do think it's pretty funny that he accuses the patriarchy of being in charge of like the anti-porn movement, that it's only by patriarchal purity culture, you know, Bible bumping fanatics that are against porn. But you forget about all, all the women that are heavily involved in kind of the pushing against pornography because of how harmful it is to women. It's this lie that pornography is all about women's liberation and that women were the one who wanted pornography, but it's men that were coming and patriarchally shutting it down. We need to stop this because women are doing something and liberating themselves and we cannot have that. It's like, bro, what are you talking about? Men were the ones that wanted this accessible pornography with Playboy and beyond. It's not liberating for women. It's not liberating for men. It's not liberating for the person watching it. It's not the, the doesn't deliver the pleasure and the fulfillment that it had promised on any account, on any side. It is through and through a lie. Sex and sexual expression are good. They are holy. They are gifts from God. 
They are meant to be used in healthy ways, in ways that we have control over rather than being controlled by our sexual urges and desires. And there are many people that have a healthy relationship with sex and sexual expression. And there are many people that fall into addiction or fall into impulsive behaviors. But just because that possibility exists does not mean that sex in and of itself is wrong or evil or bad. Notice what he identifies as the primary problem, addiction, impulsive behaviors, like those are the things that we need to watch out for. But the truth is, when we're looking at pornography, it's not just about being impulsive about it. And it's not just being addicted to it. It's like, what truly is it? And saying ridiculous things like this, that pornography is going to lead you to immoral sexual behavior and to divorce and even to murder, is just absurd, toxic, and frankly, evil. He's not afraid to draw these lines. He's not afraid to call things evil. He's not afraid to call things toxic. But what he calls toxic and evil is somebody that's coming against sin. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Maybe you're watching this video right now. You get what I'm saying. You're on board. Yes, I, I agree. I agree. And yet pornography is still plaguing your life and you can't seem to break free. I want to help you. I don't have time in this video to say all that I want to say to you, but I do have numerous videos on my YouTube channel all about pornography and how to break free. So I want you to check out that playlist on my channel here. And if you're really serious about breaking free and you want some help with accountability, I want you to click the link in my bio and sign up for Covenant Eyes. It will send kind of an, a monthly report to an accountability partner about your internet use. Click on it, give it a try, see if it helps you. You're never too far gone for God. I don't care what you think you've done in your life, what you have done in your life, what you've seen, what you've experienced. God wants you to become a part of his family. He wants to forgive you for everything that you've done in your life. And he's done that through his sacrifice on the cross that you can be free, that he bore all the weight and the pain and the shame and the punishment that you deserve that you could walk free, that you could no longer be a slave to sin, but you would be a slave to Christ, that you'd be part of his family, a child of God. Friend, repent from your sin. Say, God, I'm sorry, please forgive me and put your trust in Jesus. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate each and every one of you who support me on a monthly basis on Patreon. It is truly a blessing. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. God bless.